Hello everyone, Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations. Today I have created a card technique video for you. I'm going to show you how to add texture paste to vellum to create this broken brick background and how to create this beautiful layered rose from some vintage type paper. Let's go ahead and take a look at the supplies that I'm going to be using today. I'm going to be using a layered rose die from Honeybee Stamps. I have already cut out all of the pieces that I need from some vintage type paper, black cardstock, and black patterned paper. Now, there are quite a few layers to this card, and I'm going to be showing you how they all come together using a diagram provided by Honeybee Stamps. For my slimline card, I have a white card base, a piece of deep red cardstock, a strip of vellum to which I'll be adding texture paste to with this brick stencil and a strip of adhesive sheet to place behind the vellum. Later in the video I'm also going to be adding a black piece of cardstock for my card base so you'll want to cut one out and set it aside. All right let's start out by creating that broken brick background on the vellum. Before I add the texture paste I want to apply the adhesive sheet to the back of the vellum. This adhesive sheet is going to allow me to adhere the piece of vellum to the cardstock without the adhesive showing. This adhesive sheet has two backing pieces. I'm going to fold back an inch from the top of one of the backing sheets, and then I'm going to line up the adhesive with the top of the vellum. Take your time lining this up and use a scraper tool to make sure that it is in place without any wrinkles then slowly peel off the backing to attach it to the rest of the vellum strip. Use the scraper tool to burnish that vellum and create a wrinkle-free bond. Now we can add texture paste to the vellum. Before you lay down the vellum, make sure that you are placing the vellum side up on the board. The backing on this adhesive sheet is a little bit shiny, so it was easy for me to tell the difference. But if you're worried that you're going to mix them up, place a little pencil mark on that vellum when you're adhering it onto the adhesive sheet so that you apply the texture paste to the right side. I'm going to be using a magnetic mat to hold that vellum and stencil in place as I add my opaque texture paste. Now, this little jar was found in the bottom of a travel bag and it was a bit dried out. I added some water to the jar and I let it set for about 48 hours with a plastic covering over the top. It does look like it has refreshed a little bit, but there are still some chunks that I'm going to have to work around as I apply the paste to the stencil. Honestly, it's kind of a happy accident because the texture of that remixed paste is kind of giving these bricks a nice little broken down texture. I am just adding the paste randomly to the stencil to create kind of a broken design, which is going to allow some of the vellum to show through on the card. Now, this stencil is not long enough for a slimline sized card, so I did have to move it down to add more bricks. I just had to be careful that I didn't add too much pressure to the top of the stencil where the frame is and cause any damage to the stenciled bricks I'd already added. Now you probably noticed that that vellum is starting to curl. You can prevent this by adhering it in place to the board before you add the paste, which I completely forgot to do. So instead, I'm going to use these magnets to hold it down flat on the board while it dries. If I didn't have those open spaces on the brick to place the magnets, I would have just left it alone and then laid it under a book after the paste had dried to help flatten out the vellum. All right, I'm going to let this dry and then I'll show you how to assemble the card. I have cut all of the layers of the rose from some vintage type pattern paper. The leaves were cut from a love note script paper and the stem and some of the other pieces were cut out of black cardstock. One of the perks of the honeybee stamp die is the layered flower diagrams they have available. I just save the images on the website and create printables for the back of my die sets to help me when I assemble all of these floral layers. I'm going to go ahead and keep this available as I assemble the rows so that I can see how this design needs to come together. 
There are quite a few layers on this rose and I want to create some shading and dimension between each of the petals. I'm going to do that with some Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide ink. I have a small fingertip blending brush that I'm going to use to apply the ink. I'm also going to be adding quite a bit of shading with the ink around all of the edges of the back layers. Now, as I start working on the front layers, I'm just going to add a small bit of ink around each of those edges. Now on camera, this ink does seem a little bit muddied on some of those pieces, but the Distress Oxide ink will fade and soften. And as it comes together, you're going to be able to see how the ink shading enhances each of those floral layers. Now I cut this rose out of patterned paper to give my card more of a vintage old world feel. But there are so many options for this rose. You could cut it from colored cardstock or white cardstock or even watercolor paper. Then add coloring with dye ink, watercolors or markers or even colored pencils. I'm going to be creating a watercolor rose design in my Facebook group later on this week. While I have the ink sitting here in my workspace, I'm going to go ahead and add some shading to the petals of the smaller rosebuds. Then we're going to go ahead and clean up a little bit of this ink and start assembling the rose. As I said, this little diagram is gonna come in handy and it's going to be a helpful reference as I assemble all of these layers. I'm going to start with this largest back layer, which I'm going to kind of pinch a little bit and add a little bit of shaping to. And then I'm going to add some foam dots between each of the layers and adhere them together. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can see how each of these layers match up to form a rose. I am going to be using a thin foam tape between each of my layers to create some nice shadows and depth between each of the petals. I like having big bold flowers on my cards, but if you're not a fan of all the thick layers, you are more than welcome to glue all of these pieces flat together and create a little bit flatter flower for the front of your card. This die set has quite a few layers, so even if you glue it flat, you're still going to have quite a bit of dimension and texture to your flower. These layers are really easy to match up using that diagram. All I have to do is match the shape of the layer on my diagram and then match it up with the layer that goes on top. And each one of them match up along the bottom of each of the rose layers. So everything lines up beautifully. I am also adding a few little creases and folds to each of the layers just to add some more dimension to my flower. As I add the last layer, I'm going to create some more folds in each of those petal layers. And I'm just using my fingers to pinch the pattern paper. And then I'm also going to use my tweezers to create some nice folds and curls on some of the petals. This just gives it a little bit more realistic look and adds some nice texture to the flower. So now we have the floral portion of the rose complete. I'm going to add a little bit more ink in the center here for some shading, and then I'm going to start assembling the stem. The die set has two leaf cuts, but I wanted all three leaves on the stem to be cut from patterned paper. So I cut out another stem piece from patterned paper, and then I'll just go ahead and trim off that leaf piece that I need. I'm going to add a little bit of hickory smoke ink around the edges to help these leaves stand out just a little bit, and then I'm going to adhere them to the stem. I am going to add some thin foam tape between the layers to match the layered look of the flower. As I place these leaves on the stem, you're going to notice that I'm placing them so that some of the black cardstock shows around the edges, which is going to create a bit of a shadow behind each of those patterned pieces. At the base of the rose, there are some rose hip and sepal pieces that are layered on top of that stem cut. Now I created a multi-layered three-dimensional flower. So instead of adhering these layers directly onto the stem, I'm going to be adhering them into the different layers of the rows I created. Once this is layered on top of the stem piece, 
it's going to create a beautiful three-dimensional flower with all of the layers on that rose hip. I'm just going to add some liquid adhesive to each of the pieces and tuck them part way through all of the floral layers, building up that rose hip and sepal layer, which is going to create multiple levels of dimension with all of those little bits of cardstock. All right, I'm just going to add some of these to the front layer. Some of these are going to go behind the second layer, creating some depth and shadow on this rose. All right, I'm going to set this aside to dry and assemble the small little rose buds. These go together really quickly and don't have as many layers as the larger rose. I'm going to adhere the back layers down flat. Then I'll add some thin foam tape in between the two petal layers. The top sepal piece is going to be glued down in place right there on the top. Tweezers come in handy when you're adding all these little bits and pieces to the flower. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this process with the second rosebud. Now, as I said, I love adding lots and lots and lots of layers to my floral cards. But if this is way too many layers for you, you can skip the foam tape and just use liquid adhesive in between all of your layers. All right, let's go ahead and start assembling this card. The background brick that was created on the vellum is going to be put into place using that adhesive sheet. The adhesive sheet not only helps adhere the vellum to the card stock, but it also creates a bond that doesn't show through the vellum, which is often an issue when you're trying to adhere vellum onto a project. To place it onto the cardstock, I pull back a little bit of the backing, then line it up with the red cardstock and adhere it in place. Now, if you are like me and often lay things down a little bit wonky, just go ahead and cut your red cardstock a little bit larger than needed and trim it down to straighten everything up. I have to do this almost every time because I can't seem to line anything up straight. Now, don't you love this kind of foggy aged look that the vellum creates? It just allows a little bit of that red to show through and creates kind of an old world backdrop for our card, which matches all the vintage type papers I chose for the rose. Now, I had planned on placing this red cardstock directly onto the white card base, but like I said earlier, I made a change here and chose to add a black backing instead, which matches the other black elements on the rose and helps really bring out the floral element even more. Before I add the rose to the card, I do want to add a nice little strip of black script washi tape over there on the left side to just help that rose stand out even more on the brick background. I chose a simple washi design that didn't compete with the other elements on the card, and I really like the way it looks. I'm going to burnish this just a little bit so it sticks down to that texture paste. Now I'm going to start adhering all the rose elements in place. I'm going to use some foam dots to adhere the stem onto the card. Then I'll adhere the rose in place, matching up all the layers of the sepals and rose hip. The rose buds are going to be tucked behind a few of the layers. I'm just going to add a tiny bit of adhesive to hold each of these in place. To add some highlights and detail, I'm going to use a white gel pen on the black cardstock to bring out the layers a bit more and match some of the other white elements on the card. I love how a simple gel pen can add so much detail to a design. The sentiment is going to be a simple die cut that says My Type. This matches the other elements from the My Type collection that I used on the card. Those typewriter keys go so well with the vintage type paper that I chose for the rose. To bring out the rose design and highlight the element on the card, I'm going to go ahead and add some black dots around the flower. Now I do often struggle laying down black dots, so you're going to see me move them around just a little bit. I'm trying to form a triangle shape with the dots, and I'm using an odd number to keep the design balanced. I'm also going to add a little red acrylic heart near the sentiment to match the red hearts that are on the paper pattern on the flower. 
Now, if you've seen any of my previous creations, you know that I love adding texture to my designs with thread. Instead of adding stitching to this card, I'm going to create a bundle of white thread and tuck it there in the center of the flower. Now you're going to see me fuss with it a little bit and I'm making sure that it's sticking to the foam dots I have there so that it holds in place. Now if your thread doesn't stay, you can always lift a petal slightly and add a little bit of liquid adhesive to hold that thread. After taking a look at the card, I realized that those pattern paper leaves were not standing out as much as I liked, so I grabbed a thin gel pen and added a few more details. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this card up close and admire all the textures and layers on this design. That beautiful layered rose created out of the vintage type paper is one of my favorites, and it really makes my vintage loving heart happy. This Valentine card has a mix of textures and patterns, and I really like how that brick background on the vellum pulls it all together. The rose is full of layers, as you can see, and I really like the way that looks. As I said, you don't need to make it this bulky because there's a lot of really beautiful layers in this rose die set, and they come together beautifully no matter how you assemble it. I kept the sentiment really simple so it didn't take away from any other elements on the card, and I like how it adds a little bit of whimsy with that little red acrylic heart that matches the other red hearts on the rose. Of course, I had to add some thread to my design, so in the center of the rose we have some texture with a little bundle of white strings. Now let me go ahead and show you a few detailed photos of this card so you can see how it all came together. Vintage light cards are some of my favorites to make, and I love showing people like you how to mix different elements together to make a beautiful card design like this one. I want to thank you for joining me today for another card making tutorial. I hope that you learned a new way to use texture paste with vellum and you were inspired to create a vintage Valentine of your own. If you enjoyed today's project, I have some more tutorials for you. You can click on the playlist above to view my list of projects. While you're at it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you are notified when I add another paper crafting or Cricut project to my channel. I hope that you have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see what you create.